uh, give it a talk. You reckon? Are we back in or are we just... It should be, yeah. There we go. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Alistair, so excited to be tuning in live for the first time. Well, temper that excitement, Alistair. Fuck <laughs> 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 me. There we go. We're we back. Got sound. Um, I mean, I don't even know if I should do an intro now. I'm going to do an intro anyway. Maybe we can do something uh, <laughs> something in, in post-editing and see what happens. Look at this behind the, behind the curtain. Right. Hi, welcome to this episode of Culture of Paint. We're going to take a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main segment, we've got a guest, Mark Lifton, creator of some of the greatest golden demon jewels there's ever been. And we'll close out, as usual, taking a look at what the hashtag paint cultists have been up to. Now, Culture of Paint's aimed at a mature audience, so we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Now, let's talk about paint. And, and yes. we are back in, possibly back in. I mean, we've been in for 10 minutes now, but um, just <laughs> screaming into the void and, and, and nobody's been hearing a thing. Uh, <laughs> not my fault. Think, let us know in the chat, guys, that if you can actually hear us. Um, but no, it's not, uh, it's not Matt's fault at all. Uh, Mark has just admitted that he's currently cursing uh, his football <laughs> team, West Ham, um, with his presence as well. So thanks for that. Yep. Um, but hey, look, two seasons, episode 16 of season two, and it's the first time, you know, it's properly shit the bed. So, um, <laughs> not bad going. Winner, winner. This is something for the bloopers, real, um, at the end of the year. Right, we're back. Anyway, hi, everyone. I'm Henry. Joining me, as usual, are Matt and Rich, and our special guest tonight, Mark. Hello, chaps. How are we? Hi there. Hello. Yeah. Good. Lovely. Good. Right. So, that's stress now that it's actually working. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, Matt, are you okay, mate? Are you feeling all right? I wonder if my watch is going to tell me. I've ever seen IT you that pressure. animated yeah. before. <laughs> yeah. uh, Andy is, I think, is lurking around in the chat. Uh, can't be with us tonight. He's been busy beavering away on a secret project that hopefully we can talk to you about very, very soon. Um, but he's been off working in a factory uh, probably for the first and last time in his life. Um, <laughs> but uh, it will be well worth it when we see it coming out. So let's have a look at what's been going on over the last two weeks. Feels like ages since the last episode, but it wasn't, was it? It was two weeks. Um, I'm still just trying to get over the the Space Wolf helmet memes. I think yeah. Space Raccoons. I know, right? It's, it's been a rich time for memes. Um, right, what's uh, what's going on with the picks? I think Andy sent his pick in as well, hasn't he? Ah, but mine's up first. Well, my sort of one is up first. Um, as some of you might be aware, some of you might not be aware, uh, we've been part of the Harder and Steambeck family for four years now, five years now. Um, we produce two brushes with them, uh, Infinity and Evolution, and more to talk about that soon as well. Um, but they got on the blow the other day and asked if we could talk about a project that they're doing currently, which is this. Uh, it's a couple of airbrushes. Well, it's what is an Infinity airbrush, so they're proper specced out, top-end airbrush. Uh, in two unique schemes uh, and they're working with an artist from Ukraine. Uh, all the proceeds from it are going to go to helping people uh, in Ukraine, um, food aid, medical aid, all that sort of thing. Um, and it's just really nice to see, you know, we chose to work with Harder because we like them as a company. They make amazing brushes and it's what we used, um, but it's nice that they give a shit as well. Um, and I know that they want to try and sort of build, uh, connect a few of the dots. You know, we're a small piece of the pie miniatures gamers when it comes to to airbrushing um you know you've got traditional arts you've got cake art you've got all sorts of other things and they're going to try and connect those communities a bit more easily and, and uh, i'm looking forward to that as well so go and check out this brush if you haven't seen it uh, over on their website and i'll pop a link down in the description so it's all gold inside which is kind of cool which you'll never see that's cool but it's all gold and it's gold plated <laughs> the gold the gold on harder and Ooh. steam deck stuff is is gold um, gold gold which is pretty cool which is why when we were chatting the other day and asking how much we could have in gold um they went rather quiet on us <laughs> so what's the next pick next i can see one. andy having a solid gold airbrush mm. yes Ooh. 
Oh, I think I picked that one, didn't I? You did. It, amongst my uh, triple quadruple dip that I did, I attempted. Um, <laughs> I went no. Just, yeah, I'm I'm forever clicking on things all the time, but this one you just I mean we've seen plenty of this bust painted in the last oh probably six months, is it? Mm. I don't know. But I've seen plenty that I like, but this one really stood out. Just the glowy effect on the face, the there's nice texture on the vest, nice non metallic metal. It's just just really stands out. Um, you know, you often just flick past. You just think, oh, just don't stay on it. Those extra seconds longer than you may do for most of the stuff. <laughs> but yeah. just really fantastic. Just I wish, wish I'd painted that. <laughs> I still haven't done a bust. Well, I haven't finished a bust. I started one once. But you know, you think, oh, if I painted that, I'd be pretty happy about that. And what's the appeal then to you? Like, why do you say oh, I must? I must do one. Like, is it? I just is it a I, completion thing or a yeah. Um, I think I, I feel like I sh I should do one at some point, <laughs> and I have about five or six in the cupboard. Uh, probably more than that, actually. Uh, so about four historical ones and about four fantasy ones, probably. And I did go on a color theory course run by Alfonso and and um, I started a bust and actually it was quite it was really good fun mm. I, th I think working on something a bit bigger because everything I do is the tiddly scale unless I do an ogre and it's actually quite nice working on something with a bigger surface on it because you're just getting to such small details all the time It'd be nice to pay to an ear or an eyelid that wasn't micro scale <laughs> and just you know be able to sort of highlight it without thinking oh shit it's, my highlight is more than one millionth of a millimeter thick it's no good um you can actually be a bit freer i think yeah. and and i quite i like quite like the idea of that and also that you can probably paint it a bit quicker maybe maybe, maybe. but do something a bit freer yeah. um you know, painting for Golden Demon, it's all got to be, or the way I see it, it's got to be ultra precise, where I think if you're painting bus, I think there there is some opportunity to be a bit freer and to have a bit more fun. Mm. Did so, we ever uh, see, because um, there was there was a time when you had uh, people like, oh gosh, was it Martin Footy and Mike Anderson doing the large sculpts, like the, the 54 mils? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. But, like, was, yeah. Was I did actually ever, buy was a bus one of the buses. Like, was there? Because I'm sure Forge Wall did like a, a a handful, didn't they? At, at one. Oh time. yes. Oh yeah. yeah. I have one of them in the cupboard. Nice. Um, unpainted. Yeah. The night goblin. Um, <laughs> no, I, I I wish I'd bought the night goblin. I'm absolutely kicking myself. <laughs> that I didn't. But there was a a full size night goblin. But there was also a night goblin bust. I think. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm just absolutely raging with myself that I didn't buy those. <laughs> and the one I've got is um, is an orc one. Oh yeah. And I yeah, did yeah, used yeah. to paint a lot of orcs, but um, yeah, I've got that one. I will do it one day. Like, were Obviously. they were they popular around that time for Golden Demon? Yeah, they were. I, I was few. out. Yeah, that time, yeah. So, yeah. yeah were, I mean, they did yeah. they did pop in there, and they had large scale as a category. Oh yeah. Um, and then when they brought out the full scale large marine, then that one obviously mm. sort of dominated that that mm. category that year but yeah it was quite it, it was i wouldn't say it was the best supported category sure. because it, there weren't that many things to paint so if one of them didn't grab your attention i think you know you, you just didn't go for it yeah. um but yeah i mean it, it was it was a category for a while i think am i right I, I, yeah. it is in my head right. anyway there, large there, scale. there have been yeah. a few large scale yeah. ones yeah. yeah and they definitely <laughs> had um there was a lot of the 54 mil like inquisitor stuff that went into it as well yeah i remember there was a yes, scratch yes, inquisitor yeah. a red one hmm. that i was really fond of yeah, yeah we had all the, the inquisitor of, uh, models yeah book, wasn't he? yeah yeah and I, I got i got quite a few of those never painted them so <laughs> 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 See if you can swap one for the Night Goblin bus. If anybody, yeah, well, yeah, I did, I did, I did sell one uh, last year, I think. Sorting, but, uh, yes, sorting yes, I, I, I wouldn't mind the the. I think there was a full scale little Night Goblin. I wish I'd bought. It's, oh. Yeah, you kind of think these things are going to be around forever, but they're not, are they? Too no, right. too right. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Forge World bits and bobs, isn't it? Yes, yeah, but they were lovely things. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've mentioned it a few times, haven't we? Like we we kind of hope we might see them. I dabble in it again. 
I was going to say, was the Red Inquisitor 2A? I thought it was. Um, yeah, it was it was in the chat. Yeah. Um, who will be on in a couple of weeks, actually, having a natter. We'll get find a photo <laughs> of that. Um, lovely stuff. Right, so you said you had a, a couple of picks. Did you, Mark? Yeah. What's, uh, uh, I've got it down to two. Yeah, that's all right. You can take. You can. I'd say you can take Andy's pick, but apparently he's got one as well. <laughs> right. What on earth? I haven't got that come up. But is that the diorama? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think. I think. What? I mean. I. I I am a frustrated diorama builder, basically. So that's where I started, <laughs> making dioramas out of airfix and using plasticine to make craters. And I actually started with the First World War airfix trench uh, plasticine thing with matchsticks nice. for, and, you know, bits of cotton strung across as barbed wire. And, and I chopped up all the little airfix guys to change the poses because that's what I like doing. And uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome awful and it doesn't exist anymore and, and if i saw it now i'd probably be horrified but uh this kind of sort of hark back to that but what particularly caught my eye was the rain mm. and i haven't seen too much rain although i saw another one today i saw rain splashes uh it's typical isn't it you don't see it and then you see it's buses i've not but, seen it um, represented like this before i've seen not, i've seen not that, to that classic extent. one yeah the one where it was in the puddle when there was mm. that horse-drawn artillery one maybe mm. uh, the, I don't the, know, the rings six seven years ago something like that that's the first mm. time i remember really seeing but i've never seen it used in a scene like this no and it, I, I just you know really uh, it was the kind of thing that used to catch my eye in military modeling and i always used to sort of hanker after creating a scene with probably about 10 or 20 figures in and, and larger scale as well like this sort of scale but i know I, I i started a rourke's drift one i don't know if anybody remembers hinchcliffe miniatures i don't think this is around but they did a lovely rourke's drift uh, selection of models from both sides and i had most of them i think and i did start painting them uh, and my plan was to turn those into a diorama there was one in military modeling that had hundreds of these figures in and it would have it, oh I, I can remember staring at that for years uh and and just thinking that is what i've got to do with my time and i never finished it but there you are it's up in the attic somewhere i tell you and, what you uh, could do a yeah. nice little uh you could do a nice little more time scene using that type of hmm. yes effect couldn't yeah. you <laughs> um, that'd be cool hmm. Yeah, I mean, and it, and it and it looks very well. I mean, it, I think it's just been glossed all over, yeah. <laughs> but it it does it it just sort of. Um, I ju I just thought it was it was a really good scene, and I've seen some of the work in progress pictures as well, which are hanging off the back of it, and a lot of it is all sort of scratch built, and a lot uh, of the, the figures are, are sort of pretty much scratch built, and yeah, and, and the rain, but the but the rain was the first thing that caught my eye. I hadn't mm. seen anything done to that scale. There are probably plenty out there that I've never seen, but that was the thing that I thought, wow, that's uh, that that's taking some effort. It's just I so can't... much to learn, isn't there, from the mm. historical guys and girls, like when it comes to just scene scene building. Yeah, um, everything. I think they're just yeah. on another. Some of the things they do is just another level. I suppose, like though, I suppose you kind of either have dioramas or large scale single figures. Mm. I, I, I like I, I mean, I know there's historical gaming, obviously, mm. um, yeah. but it's it's almost different, isn't it? In the sense that it's there's perhaps a little less room for, for you know, artistic license yeah mm. um, well, I, think, I think i know. think that's the thing that's a bit scary at times is that i've painted a few historical things recently although i've still had only done 28 millimeter so um, i'm usually p pitching myself against larger scale stuff mm. but but the, the the agony there is always oh my god have i got the color right or have i got mm. the badge right or oh i've got to paint <laughs> this this little bit of stitching on the on the back of his back tail of a coat i did a french dragoon and, and I was trying to find a detailed enough picture of it to actually work out what the blimmin' thing was before I could even try painting it. And then it was so small on a 28 millimetre thing. It's a couple of blobs. Mm. <laughs> but the, the effort that went into those couple of blobs, oh, it was probably about a week of research and, you know, my lunch times, and then trying it out on a dummy bit of plastic and trying to work out, can I actually make that shape? It's so small and make it worthwhile. But it worked in the end. <laughs> but, yeah that's uh 
you got less rigor with fantasy <laughs> just say yeah. well that's my chapter or well that bloke definitely would have worn that so you, nobody can argue with you but i think even now you get i don't know whether for lord of the rings whether somebody would say well you can't paint it that color because it isn't yeah. that color I, I guess there is that rigor as well but um yeah i like the freedom that if you do something a slightly different color it doesn't matter mm. but uh yeah Absolutely. Well, two cracking picks, um, but that's your lot. <laughs> you don't get, don't get any more. <laughs> Otherwise, we triple just sit dip. here and do picks all night, um, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is always the temptation. Um, right, what's up next, Matt? <laughs> Speaking of gotta model, you, isn't it? yeah, yeah, got to be me. So yeah, literally on that on that vein, the the level of detail that the historical world go into on their their projects is baffling to me so this is a scratch built italian second world war mm. uh flak mm. cannon on a lorry but it's a model that's never been produced before uh and there's only like one surviving real life version of it and the person that made this built this literally just based on photographs from the museum where this is parked so they nice. literally spent however many <laughs> I don't even want to know how many hundreds yeah. of hours looking at photo after photo after photo and video of this in real life and they built it entirely from plastic card and bits and pieces um, to create something that was in the world but has never been made in miniature form but is historically accurate and built from scratch like just the historical kits that you get mm. the new ones are so <laughs> fucking complicated and so detailed they're so hard to build the like just taking that to this level where you've got the whole you've got to like I don't even know where you would start. Like where would you start? Chassis? I, I, no. I, I mean it just, <laughs> I, just I can just a thousand orc hobbyists have just sort of soiled themselves, haven't they? Seeing this. Yeah. Like it's yeah. <laughs> it's uh, too yeah, clean. what do you think too of, clean for orcs. What, do you, <laughs> what do you think of mounting it on a mirror? I think that's quite a cool idea because if you cool, put in it? The, the effort to put in the suspension and stuff, mm. which I'd imagine this yeah, doesn't true. Have, yeah, true. Yeah, it's a really good so, way of, of viewing underneath it. Is yeah, it? you don't want to hide that, do you? If that if no. they've gone to that amount of effort underneath, then yeah. you can't waste it. Is that yeah. like it's quite so, an elegant way of doing it? I wonder if like I wonder if they've taken that from like real life car shows or something like that. Maybe. Whatever. What are you going to say, Matt? Is that like it? It's done. He, he's not going to paint it. No idea. There are in the historical world there are competitions specifically mm. for builds. So really? you, if you go to yeah, yeah, well if you go to, if you go to like a, a competition that's got historical in it, there'll be historical painting, mm. but there'll be historical build as well, historical yeah. scratch oh. builds as its wow. own specific oh. thing. So I remember I saw one once where someone had built it was a one thirty five scale motorbike that no one had ever made a kit for and they built the entire motorbike from scratch and it's just mm. detail on on a completely different level like because if you painted that you would never know that it was no. scratch built mm. no so it's like no. well would, would you paint it i don't know i mean the guy who built this is a phenomenal historical painter like mm. his historical modeling in general is just bonkers good so he would obviously pull it off and it would look amazing but you would never get it back to this yeah. you would never if you saw it painted you just think oh it's a plastic kit mm. kind of so I it's like, well, like yeah, that do you paint yeah. it yeah quite, do you paint it or do you keep yeah. it i'd keep it like the one thing I regret mm. doing is painting my grot tank. I really <laughs> regret painting it. I wish I hadn't have. <laughs> I kind of wish I just kept it in just the build because it, it just looks yeah. so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think building building like stuff like that, especially stuff like this, is its own art form. I think it's completely different to painting. Well, it's, it's level... different to sculpting, isn't it? Too? It is because it's precision. It's not. I don't think it's any. It's not artistic. It's, it's, it's artistic model, to a degree. Model building, yeah. But it, it's, it's precision. It's almost like engineering. It's yes, it's yeah. Very yes. detailed, yeah. very specific, very measured, and fucking time consuming. Um, so I see it as its, its own separate hobby, almost in its own right. I think I wouldn't paint it if I built that. I would keep it exactly as it is. Because imagine you make, it make you a second it. one. Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. You were painting it. <laughs> fucked it. Second one for painting. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to know how long he took on it. I don't know. He just said hundreds of hours. Yeah. We must, must, must get some historical peeps on here. I've had someone actually sent me a message the other day saying, oh, you should get these two people on. So, yeah, because it's, um, 
I bet you it's relaxing too, though. Oh, God, yeah. I love it. Building right. historical stuff. You're like, cool, this turret's got 113 pieces in it. Yeah. That's me for a week. It's why I'm quite tempted by these Gundam things, like just, <laughs> just the build, not the... Because oh, also the... partly because fuck plastic glue into the sun. Um, yeah. I am fed up of ruining plastic models with my ten thumbs <laughs> and ill and ability to use plastic glue. It just so, chip, chip little brushes. It feels... Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It's not that, mate. It's me putting my thumb in it and squeezing it yeah. together, and then anyway. That's... When I when I when I do do historical stuff, I do feel I feel like so above it. I feel like I'm above my station. Like it's always a nice clean <laughs> desk. I've got tweezers. I've got yeah, yeah, yeah. plastic White glue gloves. with a little brush. <laughs> yeah, I've got like a glove on. I'm like, I'm refined today. It's like instead of going to McDonald's, you go to a, like a fancy restaurant. That's what it's like in hobby terms. Um, yeah. And but, but it, and it is great. But then like I remember when I was building, I was building a a, a 135 uh, Panther, and each one of the metal through link tracks was mm. one track put it into the next one and then there was two pins you had to yeah. put in either side of it for every single one and there was 115 on each side <laughs> so it was like 230 pins you had to put in and glue nice. but glue specifically so they could still move Love it. <laughs> uh, Rich in the chat said he's seen lots of model aircraft where they're presented on mirrors um, so yeah, yeah it's obviously is a you thing you see the, the oh. um, landing gear and stuff because that's what people will scratch build landing mm. gear with all the cables in it. same as cockpits i saw a scratch built cockpit the other day just the cockpit just a cockpit it was a section of a cockpit of like yeah. a mig and it was just completely scratch built <laughs> but it's a whole it's a whole different faction a whole different arm of yeah. the hobby that like, oh, people yeah. don't even know about yeah i mean so, it's, yeah. It's, it's really tenuously linked really to what mm. we do Oh yeah, like they're, yeah, with, with they're, there's me like like fucking flicking paint at my Space Marine. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a different level, really, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, just, it's 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 I mean it's still modelling, isn't it? But I mean it, yeah, to it, uh, yeah. That's what I mean about McDonald's and a, and a Michelin star restaurant. <laughs> that's what like the, that's my yeah, analogy yeah. for it. <laughs> there are fine modellers. Everyone loves a dirty Macca's now and again, anyway. Mate, so don't worry about let's, it. Let's live by. Um, right, what's up next? Uh, so it's mine, but it's it's slightly simpler. <laughs> <laughs> slightly. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, there's a fuck ton of pressure on getting that model right. I mean, I certainly it. for hobbyists of a, a a certain age, or, or, or hobbyists who got into the hobby at a certain time period, mm. this was just the most iconic bit. Where it was on the Citadel Annual. Yeah, ninety five ish must mm. have been around there. It's been a month um, off. Just all, all like, yeah. I mean, it's that that yeah. epic Mark Gibbons art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the sculpt is done. By, I I didn't think when I saw the silhouette, I thought they'd yeah. maybe change it a bit from the from the 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 art, but they followed it so mm. true to it. It's like mm. it's amazing. I love it. And um, I was listening to. Uh, Infernal Brushes stream with Martin Peterson the uh, other day when he had it up on like, Sunday or something and this was painted, I think he said it was three years ago this was painted Wow! <laughs> and it's only just come out now Wow what, what a great like reward or whatever you want to call it to get to work on a piece like this as well mm. though do you know what I mean? Like, if, if, yeah, if you were a hobbyist of that age you would mm. do you ever, even if you're like a really experienced heavy metal painter and someone goes, you're doing this, do you reckon everyone goes, fuck? Yeah, that. there's pieces yeah. that matter, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know yeah. they matter. It yeah. was, um... I had no idea what this was. I had to go and look it up yeah. because this is massively before my time. Yeah. It was painted by, by Aiden and I think he understood the the pressure of like what he needed to do <laughs> behind it. <laughs> he did a, it's like, just, such it's a just a job. great job, isn't it? The yeah. whole thing is just... Uh, and he's got a name now, apparently, hasn't he? It's like like really angry Terry or something. Yeah, so... <laughs> just mean, mean person. Yeah, but it's kind of nice. Like they do. I, I, I mean, I, I'm all over the nostalgia stuff. Mm. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. But it's, it's interesting what you said, Matt, about that they haven't tried to make it look like it could fit into a modern, yeah, Chaos Space Marine army. You know, it's, it's not all the proportions are different. Yeah. You know, the, the, the stylings, it's all different. I like it's... that. It's what's quite nice about the because um, it's part of the it'll be under the banner of the Warhammer 
commemorative yeah. um, series thing. <laughs> and I yeah. really, I really, really like the whole idea of that. I mean, they can just do these one-off all pieces yeah. there's no rhyme or reason that they have to be something else you just get an epic model yeah and that's that's like that's all it needs to be and in plastic <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i'm looking up look behind me i've got i I'm, i might maybe be kind of into that commemorative series thing um, i have a lot of them yeah this like it's it's getting <laughs> I don't, pretty I don't, silly I don't have any of them. um but i don't have any just because i don't it's a bit mixed though isn't it because it's some of them are one-off models like this and then other ones are almost like alternative sculpts for characters then like yeah. i've got two um uh what they call not gut rippers um the the new orcs my mind's gone blank oh, oh, um, no no oh my goodness i've got oh, paint, painted enough of them the the swampy ones cruel boys goodness me cruel it's, boys. yes yes yeah. hot a few <laughs> um but there's a few yeah there's a couple of uh, a couple of just characters for them i mean that's niche mm. right that's properly niche yeah um and then you'll get uh, what's the noise marine part of the commemorative series or was it just, you uh, just the guitar yeah the amazing like yeah, i think it was yeah so, i don't have any of these though because they haven't done one yet that's commemorative like for me like i like them sure I, like, I like them a lot sure. but like what would what would that be for you if they ever did i know he's in the fluff he's dead now but the leader of um the cadians um usaka creed, usaka creed. Mm. if they did if they did a creed model um i would yeah i'd be fucking all over that <laughs> like straight away <laughs> nice. definitely oh well maybe yeah maybe it was an episode in uh, commemorative stuff as well not just within g uh, but yeah great pick mate really great pick i think uh this this dude's screaming out for a backdrop Mm. Yeah, I was going to say that. It, it just, it's, it actually feels like it's missing something because mm. you're so used to seeing it with a. I'm trying to think, it's got, is it just a plain back background or has it got. It's CSS? green, isn't it? It's yeah, a glowy, glowy green one. But it's it not the image I've got in my head when I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I want to see how big it is. It's, I want to see I think how it's big on it like is. a, a 40 mil base. Yeah. It's so big. It's it tall. Big. It's taller than a normal Terminator, but I don't think it's like yeah, yeah. much wider. No, no, no. I would like to see it against, yeah, you know, the new Chaos Space Marine Terminators. I'd like to yeah. see it next to that. Just, just, just out of curiosity, just to see how big it is. I, I just, it's so good. I love it. And we don't have to wait an entire year to actually get no. our hands on it. No, <laughs> not anymore. It's the deal, like a month's time or something. You just right? basically have to buy the um, year subscription Sub, yeah. to Fab. Warhammer Plus mm. and it comes out in a month or two. Fab. Worth yeah. it just for the White Dwarfs. Yeah. Or just be a, a perfect Warhammer Plus subscriber like me who pays the money up front and then hasn't been on it in about 10 fucking months. It's um, <laughs> exactly what they want, right? Gym membership, yeah. <laughs> yeah, gym membership. <laughs> I'm on there for the battle Actually, report. Yeah. I did the other day. I literally went on there for the first time. Yeah, me too, there's, actually. There's I, I, I like the battle stuff, reports. Right? There's a lot of things on there now. <laughs> just, there is, just, yeah. The battle report. Give me more cartoons, really though. That's why I subbed. Mm. was like, I wanted yeah. to watch cartoons. But yeah, I mean they're, they're backdating all the white dwarfs now as well. Yeah, like, we're down to two thousand and seven. So that's kind of my great. That's my era. Just <laughs> download them all. Like I'm like reading through all nostalgia. It's yeah. But there's brilliant. tons of the um like background books as well, right? Mm -hmm. So like you know when they do like the end times campaigns and things yep. like yeah. that. All yep. that's coming. Yeah, that's there's some really good stuff in those source books. Yeah. Uh, and it's what yeah. five five ninety nine a month when white dwarf and physical it's, seven ninety nine. It's, it's a negligible True. enough yeah. amount. Yeah. But <laughs> you just... do you work? Do you work for their marketing team, Matt? Jesus. No, I just <laughs> I've, I've wanted not sponsored by Warhammer Plus. I just want to make it clear. <laughs> I mean, we'd yeah. happily be sponsored. By I we wanted would have, like, that would be great. Get I've some, wanted them to do money. digital white dwarfs for so long, and now it's happened. It's like this is that's all I wanted. <laughs> they were, when I got a... back in the hobby, there was they they did about two years of it. Yeah, that is such a you thing to want, Matt. Digital it's, white it's, dwarf. it's the data hoarder in me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all it is. You want it. You want all of that data and all those pictures just yeah, stored straight on my I, I download them. Yeah. They're all they're all got the dates in them, the issue number, the the month. It's great. Every every Wednesday at lunch, that's what I do. Good I think man. there's an episode. Just I reckon it would turn more into a psychology Ooh, session. Hey, Why look. Matt? Why Matt loves his it's data. A, it's a broad. You, you, you'd have loved the. Um, do you remember the? They did an index, didn't they? After I can't remember at what point 
they did an index of the contents of every single white dwarf and did issued they? that. No? What? I've got oh, that. God, that's, that's getting hard. I, I was getting just going to say, yeah. I could see. <laughs> I do remember that. Wow. That would be um, nice. Yeah. Like a and you could just. Yep. Should we move on to the next one? <laughs> Shall we move on to things we can actually next look one. at right now? Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the last one. Things. This is Andy's. Oh, this is Andy's. I mean, it's lovely. I don't really know anything about it. Um, but I've seen is that this a few times. painted on? Those eyes are very, very impressive. I think it's it's very good. Yeah, that's 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 really good. <laughs> yeah, that I saw good. that as well, and that 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 nearly made my list. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. Nice um, lot, plenty of hand in the photo as well. We're yeah. always fans of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say about it. I don't really know the content. Is it is it a one off? Is it a so plus you can I, buy? Is oh, yeah, you can you can buy this. It's um. I can't remember who it's by off the top of my head. I'll have to have a look. Let's see if he's still watching in the chat or if he's gone, um, he's gone, gone through a tunnel. I've noticed like a trend where people are really getting on sort of these bus styles. They're really going for it with the eyes. Everyone's really? sort of leveling up the eyes these days. It's becoming mm. very creepy, mm. very uncanny valley. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the whole face is it's just very, mm. very nicely done, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this is very good. Soft shading. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if they made that decision to do the face to a, a higher standard than the rest of the model. I don't even know if it's a whip. I mean, it may, may well be a whip. I don't know. But like Andy often talks, doesn't he, about mm. choosing to spend more time on one focal area mm. and sort of deliberately simplify other areas. Mm. Um, but I don't know. But the face is it's quite something. Very it's, cool. the, it's the eyelashes. It's really cool. It's a clever way to have done it because it's yeah. it's done onto the the eyelids, but in such a yeah. way it looks very three D. Does doesn't it? Well, as usual, we'll put links to all of these accounts uh, down in the description. So if you're not following, you can go and check them out. So, uh, no meme of the week, which means we're straight into our main segment, which is chatting to Mark, and we call him the Dual King because. In case you can't see the shelf behind him, which is bowing under the weight of, of, <laughs> of I think it's all the golden demons, isn't it, Mark? Since uh, since the mid nineties, uh, basically on your shelf. Yeah, since ninety six. Yeah, they're all on one shelf. You can, if I move my head, you can see one of the little ones that's on the far side. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the um, the little tiny and, white metal one as well, don't you? Yeah, uh, dual got... is what you're known for, right? It is, yes, yes. I've sort of got a bit obsessed with it. But, um, yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. <laughs> well, we're about to quiz you on why on earth <laughs> you've been obsessed with this for enough time now. Has it been consistent, by the way? Like, have you been in the whole time? Did you take a sabbatical? Uh, no, I, did, I, wasn't, I wasn't entered in Jewel when it started. In fact, I was in battle scene, and that well, it would have gone into dual. It was actually a, a single miniature that I converted into a, a battle scene by adding some things to the base. And I think they created dual that year. And I'd already done this. And there were there were two other figures in the base. So I thought, uh, and it was also too big as well. So I had to go into battle scene. But I was jealously looking at Jakob Nielsen's uh, dual and thought, oh, that's really good fun. Oh, and uh, yeah, and yeah. he was animating his, you know, his his pairings and it, you you know some quite elaborate conversions given the limited models that were around. Yes. Uh, you just have a look at that and think, well, that's fun because I always used, as I said earlier, I used to chop up all my little airfix figures, you know, the H O double O ones, and I'd cut the legs and bend them at the knees and stuff. And uh, if you're working with things that small, then something a bit bigger becomes a bit easier to fiddle with, particularly when they get into the plastics. Metal was a bit more of a faff. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he converted so many bits and pieces to actually come up with his, with his sort of pairings. And you just think that that, that was the thing that really interested me because, I, I, as I said earlier, I'm a frustrated diorama builder, really. <laughs> but there just isn't enough time. If you, once you once you've decided that Golden Demon's your thing and you've got two models to build in a year, there really mm. isn't enough time to do a diorama in a year. 
If I, and it's, it's, I was going to say, you've been really genuine here. Like, it's actually, if you had your way, many of your jewels are actually snapshots of a, of a bigger season. Uh, right? if, if, if I thought about it, and if I had enough time, yeah, I, I, I will be doing it. <laughs> Here we go. I will be doing a diorama <laughs> when I retire. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely, when I've got a bit more time. I've got a few ideas up my sleeve of things I'd like to do. Mm. But actually, you know, it, it, and, and again, with the paint, painting cycle the way I used to do, it was almost like six months on, six months off. So I wouldn't do any hobby for six months. I'd mm. be doing other stuff, playing football, going to dog shows, doing other things, you know. And then it was all six months to Golden Demon. Better start doing some Golden Demon stuff so it really was sort of a bit of a cycle in my year whereas now it's sort of you know you don't get so much time you you can't say oh, i'm gonna have two weeks off work and just do some painting um you've got to try and fit a bit in all the time so it's a continual effort he said we're having not painted for quite a few months in a row at times but yeah that's that that, right. it's that so cycle. You, you dabbled cycle. you dabbled in some of the other categories though is that right uh yeah i've, I've been in most of the other the categories I've, I've i've got a few monsters we i've got i've got a, a, a terrible third in a single miniature 40k um i've got a single lord of the rings as well Ooh, nice. a bronze I, I managed to scrape into these things <laughs> but yeah I've, I've got a few units from early days right. but of late it's really just been focusing on jewel because yeah. i'm only usually doing one maybe two entries a year and so you sort of you just think well that's what i want want to do so that's what i end up doing mm. um but at the moment i've got a unit on the go which i've got to finish uh it'll, it'll be finished there's there's a fair bit to do but once the once the pressure starts kicking in then i can start doing three hours a night or something but you know what's the uh, what's the clock matt 40 oh. days and where are we is that <laughs> 38 oh, 38 days. Days. Oh, I've lost two. Oh, bugger. Yeah, 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 that's six hours gone, mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do a bit later on. I'll do a bit later on, honestly. Um, <laughs> when it's cooled down a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah but so with, with regards to that then, like, I know we've given you a few questions to have a look at, but mm. inevitably things are going to come up. And please chat if you've got any questions for Mark, then stick them in and we will we will ask him. I don't promise he'll answer them, but we'll, we'll certainly <laughs> ask him. Um. Create, so we're looking at a scene at the moment, the ogre versus the or, war boss. Where does where's the concept start? Is it I'm doing jewel this year, so this is what I'm going to do. Yep. Is it that meal that model's incredible? I need to do something around it, or yep. is it coming from artwork, a story, a thingy, or all of the above? Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they they start at various sort of things. Usually, I'm looking for one model. It can just mm. be apart so actually that one is a cast off from uh fatal extraction or an eye for an eye whichever side you look at it um so, so I'm, I'm trying to think if, uh, i can't see the picture at the moment there we go this, we're now on, the, we're now on fatal extraction yeah but uh when i was doing that one i did I'd noticed the Mournfang cavalry had interesting legs that looked as though you might be able to position them and make it look like some guy was falling over. Mm. But actually, this, even the start of that one had come from looking at the, you know, the hand with the chain in from the guy on, on the stone oh, hall. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. the like, long chain with the yeah. grabber on the end of it. Yeah. I looked at that and thought, oh, that looks like he's dropping something. So that was the first bit. And then I thought, OK, right. OK, now I've got now I've got to have someone falling over. Oh, those Mormfang cavalry legs look like you could just push them a little bit. And then I had to sculpt uh, a groin and inner thighs, which was I don't do much sculpting. So that took quite a bit of effort. <laughs> but but once you saw, oh, that looks really good when you blue tack it. And then, of course, when you try and sculpt it, it doesn't doesn't quite look as good but that but the other one was a cast off from that because i'd actually worked out that the other legs looked like you could make him jump so mm. that was sort of stuck away in a corner going oh, that's the sort of plan b if this one so that, doesn't that's work. literally come from an interesting looking bit yep from a hand thinking yeah. i need you know to try and animate you're thinking okay how how can i make things look like they're moving so i've, I've, I've got a few weapon drops in various uh, jewels where you've got a hand that's open and you can have a 
you know any any weapon or whatever that's just mm. dropping out of the hand and again it sort of creates that sense of movement so that's what i was looking at there i just looked at that hand and thought wow that's that's a really good hand if i just carve that chain out and that you know took a bit of careful whittling and a bit of filling with some green stuff and you think well that looks good but i mean i probably spent about five evenings twatting about trying to work out exactly where the gun was going to fit onto his hand because it didn't look right that way and you know yeah, micro yeah. millimeters it looks wrong so you, you oh God, i mean the yeah the dithering is just <laughs> appalling <laughs> the time we're waiting oh does that look all right oh i don't know yeah. i'll go to bed i'll have another look at it tomorrow night and then you just sort of edge it around a bit and all you've done for an hour is move it backwards and forwards sideways oh, oh i'm still not happy with it i'll go to bed again and i'll try again <laughs> <laughs> but i suppose what you're saying you've got to glue it, it yeah and that, give yourself time yeah. right is by picking yeah you've that. got time in it yeah. and, and 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 when when you're happy with it you just oh that's really good but yeah and then you've got to paint the blimmin thing afterwards but <laughs> but uh, the bit i enjoy is the creativity and mm. and putting the bits on the scenery and and coming up with the composition for the the movement in the piece and getting the model right and actually the the painting's a bit of a faff at times i'll be perfectly honest yeah but but I, I really enjoy sort of creating the scene and getting the distancing right and or wrong, whichever. <laughs> well, so that's that's yeah. an interesting one, the distancing. Someone's actually, Dan's asked in the chat about there being golden rules of, of mm. diorama composition and stuff like that. But I, I remember chatting to some guys a few years ago now. It was mm. at one of the one of the Coventry uh, Stadium uh, Wyma Fests. Um, and they were talking about a, a common... Uh, thing that a common I don't want to call it a mistake but something mm. a lot of people were doing that was possibly leading to the diorama not reading as well as it could mm. by, by having too much distance between yep. the uh oh the yeah batteries. there's lot there's lot there's lots of fat that that's evenings of work ooh, yeah. <laughs> ooh, 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 no ooh, 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 you know honestly the the, the sort of indecision again oh, and then what does it look like from that angle oh it doesn't look quite as good from that angle I'm gonna have to move it another another eighth of a millimeter and yeah. honestly it, it does do your head in but but if they're too far apart it, it just doesn't they're just yeah. not interacting enough mm. um and, and there's too much space you've got to have something in between them but you know sometimes you or you can get them too close and that that used to be the real challenge that i like with the 50 mil square base that was a, that made it bloody difficult because you didn't have any you had very little room unless you were going to build the world coming off it which which some I didn't people really did. approve of but i have yeah. done i i, I yeah. did did to a certain extent but but you know that again gave you another challenge that it's got to work so you're you're moving things into the corners and then you're trying to add some scenery as well and oh god the 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 moving around of stuff on a continual basis i mean the one i'm doing for next year at the moment i have faffed and faffed and in the end i've gone for a bigger base because there's no base constriction and more but it wasn't it wasn't quite working and in the end i just got a slightly bigger round base to put it on and i think it's working a lot better now but it was really annoying me that I just thought it's just not quite looking how i wanted it to look and the spacing's not quite right they're a little bit too close and yeah if you get it wrong you you, you look at them sometimes and the, the figures are just too far apart and you just think no you should be a bit closer you know and, um yeah how much yeah. how much consideration goes into the viewing angle for it because obviously they'll take photos from any app right i was going to say like because are you someone who wants it yeah. to look good 360 yep right. yeah i i if uh behind the barrel no not behind the barrel uh da, 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 da. no the one uh i called it the first cut in the end when i put a plaque on it but the one where the guy's chopping into a saurus I, I don't know if anybody remembers that one but we got that um uh, the, the 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 first iteration of that um i had uh i really liked the little axes that the uh, empire guys had i thought they were really nice the ones with the little little holes in in yeah. the blade and i thought well i've got to have some of those yeah, in this. Nice and, and i and, and i had a guy yeah. with two of those who looked like he was chopping at something and it looked great from one angle but from another angle just absolutely bloody awful so <laughs> in the end he's he's in a pot somewhere over there to my to my left uh, um i could probably find him in a minute but 
you know, it just wasn't right from all angles. And I thought, no, no, it, it, from, from one side, it looked like he was just sort of disco dancing a little bit and not actually a uh, bit like a Morris dancer. I think I described him as one. Oh, I mean, that's kind of, kind of works for the Empire, right? Yeah. And, and, Maybe and we went, need more dioramas yeah. just representing <laughs> the hobbies of the, yeah, the old it, world. It, it 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 didn't work, so he, I had to sort of come up with a new a new person attacking that looked good from all angles. But you do, I look at it from every single angle, and if it's not working from one angle, there's usually a, it means there's something wrong with it. There's something with the positioning of something on there. So he, even with the Grot tank one, oh god, the spacing on that was just awful. Mm. Trying to get this guy to shoot the bloke off the back, and they're so close those miniatures that it became the spacing became a real challenge to make it look okay because there's not a lot of room on the back of a grot tank um, i agree with so you get, on that. get it too close yeah so. keeping it tight on that on that mm. 50 50 mil like it's it's that it, i guess it's a bit like we were talking about with the building the scratch building the, mm. the truck at the start of the thing it's it, it's an extra dimension to the hobby isn't it is is there's actually a bit of engineering a bit of but it you was know, a challenge. I, yeah. I really enjoyed the challenge. I was a bit sad when they got rid of that because I thought that was part mm. of that was part of the game. Was, I think was, I've yeah. got to make this fit on that base. Yeah. Even though they've got rid of the the basing rule in Jewel, I think people are still going to have to really keep the the bases quite small anyway. Because yeah, I think yeah. a lot of a lot of times when I see jewels in the cabinets, they are just too far apart. It's just it's just mm. like two models that are just on a base together. There's no interaction. Yeah. There's no like dynamics yes. between yeah. them. Yeah, and that's like the whole point of jewel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I mean, I I pushed it a bit more on on my last two, and they um they're on bigger bases, and it's given me the opportunity to actually look at other models that I actually, that I couldn't consider. Although, you know, there are, there are jewels. Um, the one where there's, there's the two ogres fighting, you know, if you can get two ogres fight, not mm. ogres, sorry, giants fighting mm. on a 50 millimeter square base, you can get anything in there, <laughs> but that's, but that worked, but other models I've looked at that I've really liked and, and it's gotta be models I like as well. Uh, they won't fit so you yeah. just think i can't do it. it doesn't work doesn't fit on that base whereas now i've got the option to to actually play around with some other models that i really like and fit them in so one i'm working on at the moment is one of the the orc hog riders i really like those there's a really nice one banking around the corner slightly i thought oh i've got to get that in a jewel and, <laughs> and it's given me license to do it so you know that's really that that, that that's fun it's sort of expanded what i can do now so absolutely yeah. And it's more of a diorama because it's got a lot, a lot more scenery in the mm. base. Well, I was so going to ask you. You're talking about increasing the size. Are you kind of answered what my question was going to mm. be? Is, is the actual distance between the the protagonists is presumably fairly similar, and actually uh, the extra size is allowing you to use different no, I've models. Got, I've got or... more. I've got more space between them. Right. I, mean, I, I could have. Ever ever imagined on 50 i mean there, there's, there's there's probably 50 millimeters between them right and actually it makes sense so it gives you that context and license to have a, a type a different type of scene so they don't have they don't always have to be up close and fighting right um so you can have that distance but there's got to be a reason for that distance it's mm. got to make sense you know you look at it i mean as matt says you look at some and you just now they're too far apart just doesn't work or or there's there's a lot of blank distance between them that's the other thing so you could have quite a bit of distance as long as there's a reason for it and there's something else to look at in between mm. as well so um yeah mm. it's all so, about composition really, <laughs> it's I mean, got it really it's is, got to work if you think well why is there that gap there's got to be something in that gap that there's a nugget for the you response? There's a there what's in what's in the gap. Jonathan Darson, is there a particular universe that's your favourite to build your jewels in? So the old world, Age of Sigma, the realms. Nope. Okay. <laughs> no, just no. I, give I'm, me an interesting I'm, looking I'm, hand, and you'll and you'll you'll, you'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. As, as, uh, have you got stats on that, Matt? Have I, <laughs> how many races have I done in my jewels? Uh, I mean, I'm going to be really disappointed if you haven't got stats on this, Matt. I haven't gone into it that far yet, but there are uh, there are stats uh, coming for stuff like that. I've done, I've done lizard 
Wizard Men, I've done Ogre, I've done Orcs, I've done Ogres, I've done Empire twice. Uh, no, I, I don't. No, I've done Forty K. I've done not Age of Sigma, the old stuff. But you know, it, no, bit of everything really. I, th- I think I like I like all models. I mean, even even my single mini for Lord of the Rings is really a mini diorama. Mm. So. You know, it's any excuse to put something on the else on the base. That's that be, seems to be a relatively common thing in that category, though, isn't it? And I yeah. and I I do wonder Lord if that's Rings. because yeah, because we we know the scenes from the films on which most of the miniatures mm. now are based. You know, I think yeah, I, I get why it's nicer to present them because you mm. if you're that into it, you know. No new. There's there's no like ambiguity, but I, I think of several all of the mm. minis, and they just it's not superfluous having the little diorama on there for them. If that makes sense, it's not just like showing off with basic no, I think stuff. It's fun. Like it, yeah. it sets them, doesn't it? In in the mm. in, in the where they are. Um, yeah. yeah. So let's have a look. What were some of these questions that we had lined up for you? Andy's, who's possibly still in the chat. Um, but I'm going to ask him for him. Um, favorite year of Golden Demon? You don't have mm. to give the year specifically. You can always <laughs> just give us, you know, your favorite. Your favorite no, I th- I, it's, it's, it's always difficult because your first win is always your favorite because that I can still picture. There's certain pictures in my head, but I think yeah. 2013 was 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 very special. Um, I got two golds. And I'd worked bloody hard on both entries, and and also they're much better entries than you know they're probably still amongst my best few models, and that's from nearly ten years ago. So you know I think that was really where I'd gone up a level and sort of yeah, and I probably haven't got much better since then. <laughs> but but you know you. You sort of think, Oof, yeah, I feel like I've really, and I, the effort that went into that, and it was two entries, because mm-hmm. I'm not always doing two entries, um, and that, and 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 that was the um, eye for an eye, and also my my ogre hunter thing, and those those were those were pretty hard work, and it was tough getting those over the line in in time as well, so um, yeah, because uh, did I have kids then? Yeah, I had kids. Yeah, so <laughs> young kids. So you. Yeah. Although, although actually having young kids sometimes when they when they wake you up at two in the morning, you go, bollocks, I'm going to paint. <laughs> I, I don't wake. No, I'm painting. I don't. No. no. Okay. When they wake me well, up at two in the morning, I just I literally want the earth to swallow me up. <laughs> uh, I'm with you on that one, you know, Nothing just, like uh, waking up uh, and just oh god, like this. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh, I'm going to do some painting. <laughs> Oh, well, each to their own, you know, but <laughs> you just think, oh, well, or, or or it's five, you know, maybe five in the morning. You just think, oh, yeah. that, okay. that gives me the extra hour that I can <laughs> that I can paint. Fantastic. Get so on with it. But that's how you win a shelf's worth of golden demons. It's it, it is tough at times. I, I, I'll, you know, I, I think anybody who's who's suffered the cycle of. And it is that drive. I know you were sort of talking about what drives people in other episodes, but once the deadline gets up there and the adrenaline kicks in and you're sort of thinking well actually i've still got quite a bit to do with two weeks to go i better stay up till two a couple of times yeah. uh, and and just crack on um yeah it, it, it does get you over the line <laughs> i haven't quite reached that phase yet i will do <laughs> i know i will 38 days, 38 days. yeah um and another favorite uh your personal favorite slayer sword um, I think, I'd, well, it would be a duel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I did mention it to Matt earlier, The Egg by Ruben Martinez. Oh, yes. With, have you got a yeah. picture? Yeah. yeah. It's one. just, you know, again, it's on it's on the right size base as well, I think, yeah. isn't it? But oh. it's, it's height, isn't it? Yeah, it's height. The, it's <laughs> height, but also <laughs> size difference between the yep. combatants seems to be a common But it works. Scene, it works right? beautifully. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, but the whole structure of it it's just perfect you know if you're trying to get you know, i mean it's distancing as you say it's the it's the height as well as the small base it's everything to do with that it's just perfect mm. yeah 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 i mean this featured gosh one of our very first episodes i think yeah we had this yeah. been on a few times <laughs> yeah yes 
Um, yeah. And, and, and quite. And this would have been. I mean, come on. What, the egg, yes, right. the egg, right? It's madness. <laughs> it's madness. <laughs> How old is it now? I was going to say this is this is uh, what, 2011. 2011. Yeah. So it, it it's it's worn very well, and you think. Yeah. You didn't get so many pieces of that quality around then. See so. what they were they were making some bloody good models back then as well. Yeah. Like both both those models yeah. would stand up now too. Yeah. I, just re- I remember looking at it and thinking, how how the fuck have they taken all the detail off the back of that uh, Griffin yeah. and, and sculpted that on? Because it's got a saddle on it, the actual model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. re-sculpting. <laughs> 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 I, qu- I quite like carving plastic. I find it quite fun. I don't know, man. I feel like... I'm carving it. It's just since, filling it back in. Since yeah. it's got to CAD and plastic and all of that like i find it a lot harder to blend and match the stuff like when i used to get like 10 years ago or whatever i'd get a, a, a forge world resin marine or whatever or chaos model and I'd, I'd, I'd have no fear about chopping it up and i'd be like yeah i can sculpt yeah. some fur here or some hair here that would be it'd be <laughs> fine because it was because it was hand sculpted right so it still had all of those ever so slight imprecisions and imperfections yeah. in it right but I talked to Baz uh, and who does does our sculpting tutorials and stuff. Like it's it's it, it's scary, like trying to match that precision now that mm. that they have that smoothness um, that they can create with CAD. It's um, yeah. I mean, I, I I mean, when I'm carving, I'm not I'm not doing anything particularly dramatic. But if you've ever had a, look, a close look at a Saurus Cold one, the old the old styly ones, mm. uh, they had very square armpits that, that had to yeah. be cut out once once you once you've looked at them a few times and they are pretty horrific you've got to smooth those down a bit they're not too bad to do but you know mm. it's that's it's quite sad i'm old as fuck now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> still around <laughs> yeah yeah and they have got a very blocky you know it's that where they can't where they can't do the undercutting so you yeah. end, it ends up with a filled in block and you have to you have to cut those out you can't but I, I quite enjoyed that, you know. That's as close to real sculpting as I get to. <laughs> that's that couple of armpits and a groin. That's that's all I can do. I've done. I've probably modelled more armpits than anything, um, <laughs> because you have to if you're going to lift an arm up. You've got to you've got to get good at armpits. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's there's another tip. Yeah, we're keeping keeping the uh, a track of these. Uh, Andrew, hi in the chat. Nice to see you here. But um, two A's asked Mark just to go back slightly to what you were saying about there needing to be a, uh, something in the gap between the miniatures. Um, he's saying I would nearly I think, always let the distance yeah. be empty. Could you elaborate yeah, I, on it? I mean, I, mean I, I think as long as it's appropriate, it's, it's like anything. It, if right? if, if you look at it. it and you go. And you almost hear the sort of tumbleweed noise. So what what is that gap for? Mm. Um, particularly where you see too big, you know, too big a gap. Um, you know, I don't want to pick on any any past things, but but but, you, but sometimes you just think they don't need to be that far apart. They could be half as close again, and it wouldn't make any difference to to the interaction. In which case, put them closer don't have all that empty space because when you're looking all over the model you will look down at that space and go well what's there it's just a load of sand or you know it could be um that there's loads i mean again the um the one with the the ogre and uh the, the orc there's loads of shields all over the floor so something to look at i think you've got to have something to look at that's in that gap so there could be a reason for that gap or it could be an interesting gap but don't just leave a a flat bit of mud or whatever in between um unless it's trench scene and then it could be a flat area <laughs> but there's got to be a reason behind it and 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 I, I always try and get them as close as meaningful um so i'm not spoiling the story but yeah yeah i i, I think closer yeah, I the think better I, yeah. um yeah yeah, it's it's yeah, it's really interesting. I'm glad we got you on, Mark. It, I mean, it is a picture. In in the end, it's a picture, and it, and it's got to work. So, um, but but often, you know, as Matt says, you look at them and you just say, oh, they're too far apart. What, what, why why didn't they put them closer? Mm. And it might be that 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 was the only size base that they had. <laughs> so they had one in stock, and and so you're actually 
putting the models on to fill the base and it's not you you buy the base to fit the composition and that's mm. that's probably a better way of explaining it maybe so don't think oh i've got this base in stock let's i've got a couple of models or in, in order to balance it on the base i need to put one you know two thirds that way and two thirds that way but then you've got that void in between and you could do it with half the size base and it would still be just as good so yeah that's interesting so still, yeah not starting from the not starting yeah i'll be i buy the base up well obviously when it was 50 millimeters square you were type cut so <laughs> there wasn't any argument about what you were going to be doing and then it was oh can i build a little bit that just sticks out a bit more so that i can actually get his foot on there because yeah. they're too close um, whereas now you you sort of think okay well what size base do I need and there are so many bases available yeah yeah you got got no no excuse really yeah absolutely absolutely um, so let's move on to a couple more of the question hang on we've got a few in the chat here um, and does it count <laughs> the stim is asking does it count as a dual piece if one person has clearly lost i.e. <laughs> is chopped into bits or is dead on the ground. <laughs> It's the after jewels. Um, um, yeah, do the do the they they don't need to be living. The, no, no, I mean, well, unless the obviously it's the undead. Obviously, I can think of a duel with somebody who's lifting his head off, right? Having swiped through, I think he's fairly dead. Um, most of mine have got a winner. I, th I would say, um, quite a few of them. The other one is clearly uh, dead or dying. <laughs> It's, I'm um, guessing it's a more interesting yeah. scene, right? How, as you say, having someone clearly getting the upper hand. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think it, it, again, it, it, it's context, isn't it? Of um, I, I think either work. I don't think there's a rule. Um, it's just if, if it looks cool and it's a nice yeah. scene, I think it's yeah. You it's the rule that. of cool, and it it'd be a very short fine. short interview, Mark. If we just said that though. <laughs> the rule I of think, cool, yeah. It's just making yeah. it look cool, and yeah. Well, that 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 tends to be if I'm mucking around with stuff. I mean, I I have, I, I can still remember I started three entries at the same time one year, uh, and none of them were jewels actually, and and I've I've still got a picture somewhere, and they're all on the desk at the same time, and it was one per year that they came out, but. All, all I was having was huge fun with a bits box and going, that's really cool. I like that. That's one entry. <laughs> Just spending about two months mucking around with bits, trying different things on different models and just thinking, wow, that looks cool. Well, and uh, well, so it does work. Yeah. You're kind of answering it as we go on, but I think it's worth asking as, as a question. We've got it in the list is what what keeps you coming back to Jewel then? Mm. I, 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 you're not painting a model out of a box. You're, you're actually there a creative process to it so there's something i'm always thinking all the time or whenever there's a new model the first thing you look at i mean it used to be you'd open up white dwarf and there wouldn't be quite so many pictures as there are now of models so it's quite limited but you'd look mm. at one and you go "Ooh, that's an interesting angle and I, and I can still remember um for my first duel which is the crute versus tyranid one and i remember that there was a picture of a crute and it was taken from a certain angle Angle where it looked like he was starting more of an uppercut which is what i turned it into in the end i actually had to reposition the arms and stuff to get the the end of the gun a bit higher but i just looked at that oh thought okay I'll, I'll keep that idea and um and then they gave us a free crude sprue at a, a golden demon winner's day and one of the legs was actually broken and when i snipped those two bits off and repositioned it i put it on i held it up a bit wrong and i thought oh that looks like he's tucked his leg underneath oh that's quite <laughs> good that looks cool uh, <laughs> i'm having that and then it's sort of built from there so that was an accident so you know these things just sort of happen where you see something as i said you see a hand you think okay that's 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 really cool if i can get a gun dropping out of that hand now what can i attach that to you know i built built the model just from that one thing wow. um but then then you've got to find somebody that he's fighting with so often i've built one model to think okay that's really good Whew, who's hitting him right Right. Ah well, so here's and a great time got to that stage. So mm. Andrew's asked in the chat ex almost exactly about that. Do you prefer? Do you? Do, how competitive do you like the duel to be between the combatants, or do you like having underdogs mm. or things like that? No, I don't. I don't mind. I don't. I don't come out with anything. It, it, it's the idea of the movement. So it really, really depends on what catches my eye. 
and yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to think how some of the other ones started. I mean, the the the, the grot tank one started because I wanted to paint a grot tank. <laughs> Basically, I'd had them in stock for God knows how long. <laughs> I bought them when they came out, and they'd been festering away in a cupboard. And I thought, well, I've got, I'm never going to paint all of them as a unit, and I'm so I've got to do one as a as a as a model, and then trying to fit that blimmin' thing onto a 50 millimeter square base <laughs> to actually look credible and have some mm. scenery around it, so it didn't just look like here's a tank on a base. Um, that was that that was the fun. I can still remember faffing around with bits of scenery and trying to make it so that it looked like the tank wasn't just sitting on that base that there was more to it and then I thought well what am I going to do on top of that so it, they all start from different positions I don't I, I don't mind I've, I've had things where they're not fighting you know not a, nothing's been nobody's been hit or anything in some of my jewels and other ones I think I quite like it when there's a bit of action and somebody's mm. falling backwards and you can get into blood splatters now and <laughs> That's teeth the, it, flying out. It kind like of the, feels like a, a classic trope, right? Of the, yeah. the someone's launched backwards. Well, exactly. And as you you've say, got there's to, a spray of something. Yeah. Um, so you've yeah. got to do something different after. When you've done a couple yeah. of those, you, oh, if I do that again, everyone's going, oh, he's just, yeah, that's all he ever does. So you, you do, but also you want to try something different as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the one I'm doing at the moment, they, uh, oh, no, I lie, actually. Somebody is shot. But there's. <laughs> But there's a there's a lot more action in 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 there. I've got I've got a, a motorbike zooming away, a Gene Steeler cultist zooming away on a motorbike, shooting backwards at um, a, a hog rider, and he shot the little grot that's off the back. That, that's, that's, that's and I've got no, another open, well, another open well, hand well, meme well, with well, a. Well, with something dropping out of it so that's that's knocking around it's on my instagram account um i did put a build of that a while back but uh yeah cool it's dust from the wheel yeah i was trying to make dust spray up from a wheel i've never done anything like that before so i was playing around with green stuff and then coating it in sand it sort of kind of worked uh, i haven't painted it yet but that's you know that's for 2023 so uh, <laughs> need to finish these things off first got a bit distracted building that how many while, do you have on the go at once? Yeah, Sorry, it's little things. Like... No, I mean, really, I've got, I've got, I've got that one which I, I really thought, oh, I will do it for this year, and and, and then, you know, you start getting stressed. You think, no, you're not going to finish that. If you're not careful, you're not going to finish anything. So put it down. Say, it's, <laughs> say it's for 2023, and just get on, finish that other, <laughs> um, unit, and 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 take that. So that's 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 what I'm doing, and I feel a lot better now for having done that so i think you have to some take the pressure off yourself at times although there's still a little niggly thing that I might be able to do mini scale entry you know there's always there's always that forlorn hope oh yes if i finish with a month to go i might be able to do another entry sure, yeah <laughs> <laughs> if i do it grim dark it would be really yeah. quick hey, there yeah, we go yeah. <laughs> i've got an orc bomber i've got an orc bomber that I've, all the all the mold lines are off it's all prepped uh, uh aeronautica scale yeah yeah uh, i i would love to see more like duels in the different scales i would absolutely love it um, yeah. ryan allen who is is sort of the the heir apparent let's call oh it, yes yes in, yes in a, lot, uh, a, a lovely chap one of our friends actually runs uh the heresy painting challenge in the discord channel at the moment yeah. um but i i think one of my favorite of ryan's was the battlefleet gothic one yes he did. um i just yeah it's it's just <laughs> i think it I, th I suppose it's like what you're saying about not falling into a formula for for the for the jewels mm. and and you'll there'll always be trends and there'll always be you know whether it's weapon effects or blood effects or yeah. as you say silly, yeah. silly bases yeah um yeah. that kind of thing but i think introducing scale is a nice way to I suppose because what it means is if you have a few years where we do see incredible things like the giant versus the griffin, you know, or, you know, or we see mm. a, an aeronautica or a, a battlefleet gothic scale, then it, it almost gives the, the classic jewel a little bit of time to just fall away from people's minds and then and then can come back again. Right. So you get the cycles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it can get a bit too obvious, but but you can do other things. You know, the things that stick in my mind are, uh, I mean, it's from quite a while ago, but 
where there's that woman chucking the water out of the second story yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of a building. Over it the guy feels underneath. like there's you know, quite I mean, a lot of totally comedy. different or in duel. Oh, you can you can have some good fun. I mean, I, I always have to try and come up with a stupid name plaque to put on mine. <laughs> I mean, it just you know, when when I when I got fatalist extraction, I think I was giggling for about a week about <laughs> that one. Because I'd already called it an eye for an eye, and I just and then fatal extraction, oh my god, I was yeah. Uh, that that was that was really good fun, but I, I just like something stupid yeah. on there because it is fun. It's fascinating though, as a as an observer and a fan, right of of, of Golden Demon, like mm. the the way the categories and they would because they've been around for thirty years or whatever. But they they kind of do mm. have their own character, the categories, and it, and it's always felt to me like Jewel has been has has kept quite a lot of the the charm that you used to get with Warhammer mm. the Old World. That's the only way I can describe it. And it doesn't have to mean it has to be an old world jewel. Mm. But but a lot of the time it just had a little bit more of that. I don't know. Fun. It just took itself maybe a little less seriously mm. than say your, your classic single figures and uh, and stuff like that. It's nice, right? And I've always thought it's very interesting that it exists alongside Diorama. Mm. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I mean, a lot of other shows, they'll, they'll be in together. Mm. Or, or you just put your jewels into other or something mm. like that but it, it it's i think it's nice that it's been kept to one side because you've got you've only got to paint two figures if you're doing a diorama then then my, my mind goes straight to matt parks and you think oh shit, yes, that's about three right. years work yeah um i can't <laughs> do that um whereas a jewel is something you can focus an awful lot of attention on and actually do, you know, more so than than for painting a unit. I mean, having painted my first unit in ages, I'd forgotten how long it takes to paint. Uh, is it nine or is it seven, uh, nine figures or whatever? You just think, oh, my God, the amount of effort that goes into it. And they're only goblins, we've got to say. They're tiddly. But <laughs> the amount of effort that goes into painting all of those mm. compared to a jewel, it's probably harder doing the unit than it is. Um, but it's the composition that's, you know, that's the bit I really like. Mm. That's the faffing around and moving things around and finding bits to put on the base and sort of think, what else can I put in there? What's the story? What can I, you know, how else can I sort of build the scene is, is mm. half the fun. So when I'm looking at dioramas from the historical area, I'm probably spending more time looking at the buildings and things like that going, cool, look at that, you know, never mind the figures mm. in the foreground. It's the setting that's, that's really the, the the fun part and you think god they must have had a lot of fun putting that together <laughs> so as someone as, as we say has, has been doing jewel for a long time doing golden but, but mm. known for jewel for a long time he's clearly quite good at it right <laughs> it's, it's it's just factual even you know in spite of the fact that you said about matt parks like yours and matt Parks' stuff to me is that's that's why i go to golden mm. demons right that's the type of stuff <laughs> that you just don't see anywhere else right mm. um i can see amazing painting single miniatures a lot of the time right but but jewels and dioramas yeah that, that's where it's at but you're obviously you're you are evolving you said 2013 was was a highlight for you and i, yeah, and I think yeah. it's, i think it's fair that people you know that in, in any form of, of competitive endeavor you you tend to have peaks and troughs and it doesn't necessarily mean mm. that when you peak you're winning everything and when you're in a trough you're losing everything um you know, it depends what's going on around mm. you but yeah what would you say at the moment is something that you're looking to? So obviously you're still going, you're talking about yep. next year. What's an element of it you're looking to progress? Where where are you wanting to push on and not just to keep Ryan at bay? Like what is yeah. what is what is driving <laughs> you? You know, what, yeah, we well, do look over your shoulder. Thing? Oh God, and you see <laughs> you see things on the internet and you think, oh crikey, I've got to really really push a bit harder, um, which is good. I mean, it, 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 it but it's the the create the, the creative buzz is that is the thing that keeps me going. But in terms of other things, I, mean, I still haven't done non-metallic metal, and I'm booked on your course <laughs> later on oh, this lovely. year. Um, so I'm forcing myself to do that. And the reason why I'm on here is that I wrote to you about the airbrush course. I know what a lovely email. So, so Mark, I, I just replied yes, to Mark yes, and I was saying, you, uh, "Are you?" Are you the Mark Lifton? By <laughs> I've never, yeah. I've never done that right in this hobby. I've never yeah. done, sort of, you know, celeb uh, But yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I did do that reply. Yep, um, it, it, but I'm yeah. doing the, you know, I'm doing the airbrush stuff because I've, I've had 
I've had airbrushes in boxes. I have uh, uh, your your signature airbrush in a box. I've never got it out. Uh, I've got to get a move on. And and part of that is because I still handcraft. Play. I, I don't play the games, really. I've yeah. played a bit of Blood Bowl. Um, I've had a couple of tester games of, of 40K, but I still would like to play Kill Team. And really, I just kind of think... Um, Having an airbrush might might get some of the scenery done a bit quicker. There's an awful lot of uh, box sets in boxes in my house that I need to do something with. And I can't help thinking that that, that will shift me along a little bit. Um, um, and I think I could have some fun with it as well. Um, I think it'd be a good, a good skill to have. But, you know, I, I do. I did start off as an army painter. And, and, you know, the irony is that probably the one army I've got most of, which is orcs and goblins, is the one that's... Uh, transform the most in terms of the current auric mm. look i mean i've got i've got a very old hammer style orc and goblin army that's mostly marauder miniatures a lot of it anyway proper so orc. yeah proper yeah proper pa all painted in a cabinet uh never gamed with um probably won't game with those but i'd like but i'd like to i'd still like to get into the games so you and, might have to send me some pictures so that I'm, i've been i'm <laughs> i'm currently writing uh the the skaven show was quite popular mm. and i'm i'm decided i'd like, quite like to do orcs um for the next one so i've been sort of scribbling and uh, fuck it we'll just go into a very brief <laughs> brief tangent with this but you're right they are a to, to have probably four maybe five genuinely significant style changes um mm. you know with, with and that's just within fantasy um you know now they've they, they diverged it's yeah. um it's yeah I, I'd, I'd love if that was all i liked because you could just hobby <laughs> hobby with green skins forever um, yeah be, yeah i do like the old style amazing. ones and i've still you know i've got one on my desk to paint when i can get around to it and it is an old marauder one one of my favorite old miniatures Ooh. Um, yes, but yeah, I, I will get around to it one day. To get you on, get you on for some old hammer <laughs> but, chat uh, at some point. Um, yeah, right. Well, I mean, I think it's safe to say we're going to have you back on because there's tons of stuff I want to talk to you about, <laughs> and people are asking it, and we haven't even got to touch on. Um, but we'll finish you up with a couple of couple of quick fire ones then. Um, every, you know, your your stuffs. I don't know, getting sold. It's on fire. Whatever. You're only saving one piece. What one are you saving? <laughs> <laughs> oh that's really hard that is really hard um probably fatal extraction is because it's Cause you can just chuckle at the name yeah and the tooth coming out i mean it, yeah, it didn't take i made three of those and I, and actually the first one i made was perfectly fine but you just and and it didn't take very long because you just put a, a cross with a uh, a knife on the top you know your, your modeling <laughs> knife on the top and you think oh that Looks all right. Looks like a tooth. Brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, that, 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 that sort of eureka moments when you think actually sometimes stuff's actually a lot easier than you think it's going to be. <laughs> the tough bits doing the blood splatter coming out of the mouth, not the tooth. So yeah, that that that, that was a fun moment, and I, I really enjoyed putting that one together. And how many different bits there are on the arm of the guy whacking him with the with the hammer? I think there must be about five different uh, bits from five different models. Just to make that arm up, because I can't really sculpt anything, so I had to keep putting bits together <laughs> until it looked all right. So I wish I had a shot of that in, in bits now. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that one, that one was really just such. It, a is, good a, one. it is pretty special. Mm. That one. I mean, as as a fan of the old world, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty iconic piece. That and one. And fitting it and fitting it on that base, that was blimmin difficult. Because <laughs> you got a horse on there. I mean, come on, yeah. it's, it's a horse. Yeah. <laughs> All send an ogre on there, and and the, the and yeah, I mean, I, again, space, the, right? You've left. There's still yeah, there's still quite a bit of space. On there space on there. Faffing around to get that positioned just right. You, you know, it's 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 weeks of just faffing of, of just going. No, I don't. Still don't think that's quite right. Let's move that wall another millimeter. Let's just oh, it just takes forever. <laughs> Love it. All right, and you've given us a few absolute gems so far, and these are never easy to answer, these these one bits. But if you're speaking to young Mark <laughs> yeah. or, or or someone who's seeing this for the first time is going, oh, fuck, Jewel, that looks really fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, what's yeah, the, yeah. What's the overarching little bit of advice for someone going into it now, let's into say? Jewel now. Oh. Yeah. 
I think it's just it, it is just having fun. Have a have a look at your miniatures, and I think I think don't use stuff straight out of the box. It's very rare that you can get two models. I have done the odd one where it's two models straight out of the box, but I think the biggest fun and the reason why you're doing it is that you're trying to create something unique. Mm. So you want to just have even if it's just a few little tweaks on the model just to make it yours, which is easier when you've got all these different bits and stuff like that now. Um, but it's the creative side of it that I think is the, is the buzz. And if you, you know, if you really just want to paint, just paint, don't, don't go through the stress of trying to make something. I, 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 you know, I don't think I could ever be particularly good at sculpting, but I imagine the buzz from sculpting something from scratch. That's what I'm kind of getting from Jewel mm. is that I've created something that doesn't exist. So that, that, that for me is the fun thing. And I could see that's what, you know, I like kit bashing as well. It's fantastic. You just get a bit of blue tack. You go, oh, that looks really good. I love it. <laughs> I've made a new model. Woohoo. And that, that's the kind of feeling you get when, when you're doing the, 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 the duel and you get the positioning right and you just, oh, that's really good. And then you just think, oh shit, now I'm going to spend six months painting it. But <laughs> don't the ruin actual it creative paint, process. Yeah. Yeah, and you think, oh god, now yeah, now I've got to work out how I'm going to paint this, and am I going to ruin it, and it's going to take forever, and how am I going to chop it up so that I can actually paint the blooming thing and actually assemble it, and it will come together correctly at the end. That's the other part of it. But well, that's it. I mean, a lot of people, and myself included, there's, I'm intimidated to paint certain models, right? Because I don't want to ruin them. Yeah. we talk about this periodically with people when mm. they come on, but I can only imagine how much that's amplified when it's, uh, you know, never mind it's for competition, but when it's for a when it's a scratch, not yep. scratch job, but you know what I mean, a truly unique yes. piece. Yeah, yeah, um, that's huge pressure. God, and you keep doing it to yourself. I know, I know. I, it, it, you've usually by the time you've faffed around with it enough, you've got, you you start to get a picture of how you're going to paint it. And often you just go for the easy option, which is okay. I'm going to follow the the box art for that particular model because mm. it's all about the, com the composition. And then it, you know you got a stock way of okay. I'm going to paint that red because I like painting red, and I know I could do that okay. So you can go for some some easier options. So I mean, I think originally the the ogres in 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 eye for an eye was going to have stripy trousers. Well, that that went out the window pretty quick when you try and <laughs> when you try and draw stripy trousers down those legs, and you always yeah. end up with the inevitable bit that doesn't work, and you yeah. just say, oh come on, let's not let's not put yourself through that. Let's just paint them a slightly. <laughs> <laughs> different color to normal and that's you know you can make it good because there's a lot of painting to do and it's all got to be of a really high standard and you you can't leave bits of the scenery painted badly either i think that's the other thing that you've got to do you've got to paint all of it really well mm -hmm. um so i have you know spent far too long painted the base in the past um and, and and again the hammer time one with all those blooming shields i thought i was having such good fun oh that's another shield i want to put on there. oh and i'll put another retro shield on oh and there's this re oh i like that shield and then you think oh i've got to paint all these now and mm. and i was painting that base for months and you just think i'm never getting to the figures uh, and actually that one i think i entered it two years earlier and i hadn't really finished the two figures properly so i went back and finished them so it didn't place um and i went back and i fixed all the bits that i'd hurried uh, and there were quite a lot i think about 20 bits that i'd really hurried and and you know when 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 you're hurrying you sort of accept it and you go oh, that, but that's all right that looks fine that looks fine and then after the event you look at it about three months later and you go oh my god look at that it's so scruffy and what have you so i went back and fixed it and uh, so it's worth doing that i think you know we put ourselves under time pressure and sometimes you don't finish things to the the degree that we would like but you've you've got to you've got to take something and that was the only thing i had that year and you've got to enter i can't imagine turning up to golden doom without <laughs> anything i just feel like you yeah, know what am i doing here <laughs> if you say well where's yours if, well, i haven't got anything you know just <laughs> i've got well, to Ryan take would something be happy. yeah <laughs> so you've got to take something so occasionally you've rushed stuff do do go back at things mm. i think as well you, you can be your own critic and say okay i know i rushed that um you know you might get lucky in place or you just there were too many things wrong with it and it was inconsistent in fact parts of the base were painted better than the fig some 
some bits of the figures you know i'd spent ages painting i can remember spending ages painting one or two bits some bones and some lovely um bits of rust dribbling down and thought, oh this is lovely and it was the base <laughs> i've got to get up with the figures <laughs> So there were quite a few things that were wrong and, and, and they will pick up on that. And I, and I think when I won with it, when I took it back, um, Joe Tomaszewski said it was just consistently painted across the whole model because there was so much stuff on there. I thought, yeah, that's what I fixed. And that, and that's why it lost the first time they do, you know, they notice everything. You don't get away with anything uh, when they're judging and they're, and they're trying to split hairs between the, the model models that are there so you've got to attack the base as much as you, you have with the figures and that you know that's not everybody's favorite bit of painting the bases maybe so um if you like figures and you want to paint the figures just paint figures <laughs> interesting well i mean yeah. yeah there's some some absolute gold in there really glad we got you on mark thanks for coming on <laughs> okay. i've really that's really enjoyed fun. listening to that and i say we'll, we'll definitely be having you back on if you'll come yeah, um sure. yeah so Let's close out the show as normal. Let's have a look at some paint cuts. Let's see what the uh, the rest of everyone's been up to. Um, if you use social media, particularly Instagram, if you follow hashtag paint cultist, you're going to expose yourself to a ton of different styles, different uh, manufacturers, different game systems. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a very good way to lose quite a lot of time. Um, I think we're 13,000 now. I think we're going on, on there. So it's, yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty plenty to look at uh, and all we do every couple of weeks is just grab a handful that catch our eye um and share them with you um and i always pick them or i try to pick them a few days in advance of the show and inevitably forget what they all are um so <laughs> i'm looking forward to this as much as as much as anyone else uh, what we got matt ah oh. right this <laughs> is an account we featured a few times um not just because their stuff is absolutely superb um but because they're a mate and it's just been one of the nicest things to be so proud of a mate of yours to see what they've done over three years like how far they've come over three years and it's it's just hard work um and jared's just put in a crazy amount of hard work uh, mm. and learning um and done the painting um and and he's just knocking out amazing piece after amazing piece at the moment um but also i love the subject matter for this mm, i mean what yeah. what a cool take right on uh on, it, on it Wizard took me, of Oz. it took me a while to figure out what it was and i was just, it it just yeah it just sort of i saw toto <laughs> and i was just like oh it's, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's just great yeah um, well as somebody who owns a dog that looks like that because it <laughs> is a ken terrier and i do have ken terriers it's uh yeah even closer <laughs> tin man uh but tin it's man lovely you know i mean again now. it's yeah it's that consistency isn't it yeah. that we were talking about all over yeah and what we were talking about before the show went mark you were saying like just competitive people are competitive people you get to events any show that's on get there and mm. jared's in oz and you know they have to travel a long way to get to anywhere um and yeah. jared's just getting himself out to all the painting competitions he's in amongst it um and it's just it's just a joy to 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 watch. It really is. So um yeah, so well done, mate. I'm really really enjoying that. Um what's up next, Matt? This one jumped out <laughs> immediately. Uh, again, an account we featured a couple of times. Uh, I recognise the uh, the account name. But it's just I don't know, man, like the, the presentation of it, the colour, the I think it's the presentation of it I really like. You know, the that vel vel exactly the base and the velvety black yep. backdrop is just it. I love I love different ways of presenting models. And sometimes having your hand in there is the right way to do it. I get it. <laughs> right? But but this is it just feels I could just. Yeah, I don't know. It's just that this, base is crazy. It's it, everything never about, about it. it. it yeah, this is this is we say it nearly every episode. This is one of the miniatures painting is artwork things mm, yeah, yeah. Right. it is a piece of art yeah. yeah um and it's just lovely like i would i would be quite keen to track this miniature down and have a go at it because mm. i think it's very cool mm. i just yeah just love what they've done about it we don't see enough orange stuff it's just too hard to paint mate <laughs> <laughs> it's true though right we just don't just don't see enough orange stuff um but yeah it's mega what's up next Matt? 
Um, this one's just very striking. Like I say about things jumping out. Um, mm-hmm. Trying to remember now. I try and scribble down why I've picked them as well. Some, sometimes there's a reason in the description. <laughs> but I think this is part of a larger project. Their take on, um, you know, their take on Legio Custodes and, and a, a different a different style. Um, and it's nice to see. You know, mm. it's um, very stylistic. Um, but very striking. Mm. Um, and I guess a way, what you were saying, Mark, about you create something unique. You've yep. got to paint it and not spoil it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, Huge pressure. It's a one-off. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think... Can't... I'm going yeah. and buy another one. Well, you can make another one, but we were talking about that with that vehicle earlier on, weren't we? Right. Mm. <laughs> Try and make another one of those vehicles. But oh. yeah, it, it, it's a very special piece. And then be able to create something like that and then paint it as well is, uh, yeah. yeah. But I think ch- taking a taking a chance with the painting, in a sense, with this one as well, like this isn't just colouring it in, you know, mm. for, for, for want of a better term, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's real decisions here. And what I like about this as well is I'm not a fan of something that's known as a concept army, right? Which is basically grayscale with some color sprayed on it. I don't, it just doesn't do it for me. The the best thing I've ever seen like that is when people did, oh, who's the person who did Sin City? Frank something. Frank Miller. Yeah. I've seen like a Frank Miller corn army years and years ago. And actually it did look really cool. So it was all grayscaled and then loads of blood effects, but it, it wasn't lazy, like it was deliberately mm. done like that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the whole like you know just blat a bit of color on it, call it call it concept. But this doesn't feel like that. This feels a lot more deliberate, right? This feels lots of even though there's not many colors on it, it still feels very painted. If that makes mm. sense. Um, yeah, just really like it. Just cool. Not seeing anything like it. Um, and I assume it's a it's a what you call it? It's a co. Um, collaboration collaboration yeah mm-hmm. um, between these two accounts marco made it and Alpha yeah. painted it i like it i really really yeah. like collabs um i'd be terrified man i love the idea of it <laughs> yeah. but like if i was doing the painting yeah <laughs> made me this beautiful thing the amount yes. of times that i fuck up paint things that i'm doing but and think, restart but, them ah, but you're, that you're doing yourself a disservice there also like but think there's there's levels of that though right there's there's a scratch bill for golden demon mm. that you've got yeah there. but there's also like you know my mate trev loves kit bashing and converting but he'd be the first to admit he's a very basic painter right? yeah mm. i love kit bashing and converting but i simply do not have the time like mm-hmm. and I, I feel I should spend more of that time painting than I should doing that. So actually, if yeah, Trev true. makes something really cool, and I can paint it up in a, you know, a week's hobby sessions, then it's been done, hasn't it? Yeah. It's true. It, it, it yeah. looks cool. Um, and you know, and you're for someone as butterfly as you, it's almost perfect, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's true. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like little tiny little self-contained projects, sort of, sort of projects, right? Um, and it's also it's someone else's, so there's emphasis for me to finish it. So they will actually fucking yeah, finish yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Colabs might scribble that one down. Um, right, I think there's a couple more, isn't there? Right. Yeah, it's four. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, this just messed, messed my eyes up. Yes. Repeatedly um, when I was looking that's at it. That's horrible. Like, it's great, but it's oh, horrible. Isn't it just? Like, oh, I can't look at it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but must that yeah, must be? Yeah, I'm looking at it again because well I. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Just it's just horrid. Yeah, I, I can't look at that. <sighs> how does how do you create things like that? How do you think about it? It's oh I mean that's, that's just... almost almost Forge World quality of cast mm. there. It's a whole thing. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. very good. Very yeah. good. Love it. Very, very cool. And again, I've never ever seen this sort of thing if it wasn't for that hashtag. Um, so yeah when i yep. say awful yep. actually very very cool but it is difficult yes. oh yeah it's great but it's just <laughs> fucking horrible <laughs> it's very hard to look at mm-hmm. especially if you have like crap vision like me <laughs> yeah same that's what i mean i can't tell it's just my glasses got wrong <laughs> yeah well, you do it does make you want to go oh, oh yeah, it is yes okay. uh, yep. it's even worse when it's the thumbnail size on the phone like it's even more like yeah mind, yeah. mind, mind fucking um um one more is it matt no, it's three more. Oh, two more. Three more. Bloody hell. Uh, this is just outrageous, oh. isn't it? Like, I uh, just 
it's it, brilliant. It's hard to tell it's a bust. <laughs> yeah. It's just brilliant. Isn't isn't there a, an exhibition up in London that's very similar? Mm -hmm. Is that taken from... I can't remember what it... It's is it a Mexican art. artist or something? But that's... I can't remember the name of the... Um, the exhibition, but it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just moment, screaming it? that at me. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots of yellow with, with, um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like it's inspirations taken from that. And then it's just, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really like that. I, I just think it's taken somebody else's idea and then turned it into something else. It's great. It's just so striking. And I, yeah, I just, I think it's one of the best things I've seen in the two two seasons we've done. Best, mm. It's one of the, my favourite things that I have seen. But that's the, the fun. I mean, people are doing. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'm taking my kids to the. Um, uh, there's that 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 miniature exhibition up in London. Uh, Small is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it or I'm going to find it annoying because they're using bits of Lego and and stuff and it, it, it from a painterly point of view it's going to be really crude <laughs> so it's just going to be lots of quick ideas you know oh i've stuck some lego guys on top of a blancmange and they're playing tennis or something and you just think okay fine i think we can all do that can't we but so i don't know whether i'm going to be cross when i come out of there or inspired but i'm hoping <laughs> it might might make my kids think oh i could do something fun with some some with some mini things because they're using stuff like things that you decorate cakes with you know i've seen yeah, some, yeah. some, some yeah. prints of it and yet there are some things that are um almost sort of diorama quality buildings so mm. it, it from in terms of the level of skill but obviously there's a lot of creativity i think the one that strikes me there was uh two or three uh jellied crocodiles hanging up on a washing line with a yeg with a lego um figure standing there with a bush knife or something you know you just think <laughs> well, okay fine but it's very creative that's it right not, yeah you're just using oh. other people's things but, oh, but you know it's still fun yeah well speaking of like tiny things i don't know matt did you use any of the other images for this no I just so i would i would really encourage people to go and look at this so it's tiny yeah two's just said it's uh, about the size of a thumbnail yeah yeah, in one of the what? images, in one of the images, that, yeah, the, the artist puts their, puts their thumb. The 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 she is wow a, a, a little bit bigger than a thumbnail. Um, I'm gonna wow. go find it. So I was just having a look. It was a, a tiny bust done by Pedro Fernandez Works <sighs> at Pedro Fernandez Works that was available as an yeah. event exclusive at World Model Expo, which we spoke about a few weeks ago. Um, and yeah, hmm. this this artist has put a lot of thought into <laughs> that it. Is a miniature. It's, um, That's like, it's already yeah. my like thing of the year. So it's going to be interesting to see what's mm. what's what's coming next. Um, did you say there was one more? Two more? Uh, two more? Two more? Now back to uh. goblins. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just what's not to love. Yeah, like green skins in any form, especially if there's checks on it as well. <laughs> um, I hope yep. you, this is there checks featuring on your rats, Matt. Yes, and uh, stripy trousers, correct? I don't know if you can, probably can't see it too well. No, you know, we have to see that, but yes, uh, I've given <laughs> the, the ninja one, he has a checked, uh, like the hood ridge, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, fades, nice. fades out to purple. Oh, fades out, amazing, love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Christian it's just done an awesome job on this, yeah. Um, there's, there's, I, I don't think I've seen a bad goblin model. Um, I just love all the different takes on them. Um, mm. Yeah, must quite fancy painting a larger scale goblin, or maybe, maybe even making one. Um, we'll see. And yeah, I've got, I've got my got my labyrinth um, one on mm. the rider thing to do at some point. Mm. Yeah, labyrinth Brian, goblins, Brian Frow, yeah. Man. That's, yeah, yeah, whatever those beasts they're sitting on, but I've yeah it, 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 it's it's part prepped <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of cute things i think there's one more here we uh, go oh yes if it's a critter if, if yeah, it's an anthropomorphic yeah. thing there's a very good chance i'm featuring it um <laughs> but there's definitely feels like since there's 
since 3D printing, particularly the last two, three years, which I guess because people have been cooped up doing it, it feels like anthropomorphic stuff has really exploded. Um, there's, I've said, there's a few like real popular kickstarts. There was Dungeons and Dungeons and Doggos um, and things like that. And you've got the, the wonderful um, Burrows and Badgers miniatures game. Um, it's just, I think I like it because it's very far away from Warhammer. Um, I like yeah. that about it. And it's just, it's just quite sweet. Um, if they, and, uh, yeah. if they ever did like a proper series of the Red Wall characters oh, from goodness, the Brian Jack books, yeah, yeah. I'm I, trying to trying to get the rights, mate. Don't worry. It's <laughs> that would <laughs> yeah. be the. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I I never paint big scale stuff. Like if yeah. they created some of those actual characters from the books, because they were like the first fantasy books I ever read when I was a yeah. kid. If they ever created them, I would a hundred fucking percent have them and paint them. Yeah. Well, I'll mm. try. I'll try harder. Um, try harder <laughs> to, to get it. I need more money. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, finish that with a with a cute little critter. Um, so there we are. Um, so yeah, if you'd like us to feature your work, or more important, if you just want to share your work with people, just use that hashtag uh, Paint Cultist, and uh, it's really lovely. I thoroughly enjoy looking through it every week. Um, if you want to reach out to us, if you've got ideas for shows, or you think there's certain people or accounts that we should take a look at, then we're on all the usual places. Yeah, me, don't send memes. We're on all the usual, all the usual places. Um, we've also got Discord up and running now. Big thanks to Todd. Uh, the links will be around. We've sorted out the link so it's persistent now as well, so it doesn't expire um there's plenty of ways to reach out to us uh, and we do like to hear from you because it's you know it's going strong this whole yeah. paint cultist thing it's uh, it's not it's not too bad trying to connect people and have a bit of a giggle with it so it's uh, it's going well so thanks ever so much to the chat for joining us as ever um ton of good questions in there and some conversations as well yep. um, which is which is really nice it's really, i feel now like a year and a half in or whatever properly starting to like the chats are uh, thing isn't it like this it's like it's like going to the pub every week yeah that's exactly (laughs) it which is which is precisely what we wanted really we we Mm. wanted all the gamers have all these fucking events to go to and all these things to talk about list building and this that and you know you know i wanted that for papers (laughs) you know i I wanted us to create something like that so um hopefully we're 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 on on the on the road uh Mm. on the right um rich matt thanks as ever um, you're awesome, uh, Matt. Don't worry about the massive technical error at the start of the show. No one's going to remember it. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll timestamp over it. Yeah. It's me looking like a dick anyway, which is nothing new. So we'll we'll, have, we'll just gloss over it. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, and huge thanks to you, Mark, for coming on. Um, I really enjoyed it, but I, I'm, no, it's a pleasure. Yeah, Pretty I'd good fun. Really get you on. Best of luck getting everything done for uh, October as well. October. Yeah. Oh, October. Yes, yes, um, yes. Please, yeah. One month sure we'll catch up with you at the event yeah. and then hopefully afterwards um yeah. and uh, yeah and we'll see what's going on Brilliant. um so yeah thanks everybody if you're watching it back you know the usual like subscribe tell people about it um but until next time take care we'll see you soon Ciao. Okay. cheers everyone